The following program is rated TVMA. This program may contain strong opinions, explicit language, and possible adult themes. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of the Smoke Free Radio Network or its affiliates. This program is meant for mature adult audience. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Hey everybody, Mike Peterson. Welcome back to another episode of Vaping in the Mic. A lot of stuff been going on in the last few days. Uh, even today, even today, it turns around and here again we see Mr. Gottlieb, the FDA, a wonderful thing, was on CNBC today. And I don't know if people stopped and took a look at him or saw what was kind of really going on. But I found a couple of remarks. Found a couple of remarks on the CNBC part that makes me worry and wonder a little bit. And I'll, I'll read them. I've got them up on a screen over here. Uh, it turns around and they talk about the, the effing five that got the, the letter and the warning letter. And hi, now we want you to send a letter on how you're going to help curb teen use, this epidemic that's going on. But he turned around, he said, uh, some companies have talked about ideas. Some manufacturers have said the agent's requirement that any new e-cigarettes must undergo review before entering the market prevents them from introducing new products that could curb youth use. Uh, that's actually very true, as the FDA has it standing right now. Nothing new can come out. So how do they get a new product to market that the FDA can say, we like that? Yet Gottlieb said, while companies have talked about these ideas with reporters and politicians, they haven't raised them with the FDA. He said the door is very open to that kind of discussion. So let me get that part straight. As long as... It turns around and suits their narrative. They're okay. And as long as it turns around and it suits everything that they're doing, they're, they're okay with that. And they'll listen. But the rest of us have to pony up and take the back of the bus, evidently. Yeah, the door's always open if you really want to just come in and meet our demands. We'll, we'll listen to that. And he turned around and he said, I think if someone came to us with a good idea about how a product could be modified to be less appealing to kids or less prone to misuse by children, really? Come on. We'd be very interested in that product and we'd be very happy. We'd be very interested in having a discussion around that and how we could put that through an efficient regulatory process. So as long as you're willing to pony up and meet what they want then they'll listen. But the, again, the rest of us in the vaping industry that have valid products that are saving lives, that are helping people stop smoking, the rest of us, well, we don't know what the hell is going to happen to the rest of us now, do we? Oh, if I keep reading through this, Jewel, Jewel, and see here again, if you listened the last week, the top five were like Views, Blue, Jewel, Mark 10, and one called Vice. Now, Jewel came in third, right? With 17% of all the letters they sent out of the 1,300. The Blue came in second with like 22% of all the 1,300 letters. The, the, the Views that is owned by Big Tobacco came in with 45%. They, they took the top of the cake. But it's the jewel that you keep hearing about. All right. This thing with CNBC turns around and says the jewel, the brand that dominates nearly 73% of the e-cigarette market. You know what I want to say about that. We're not going to start into that. It said it believes technology is absolutely part of the solution. Really? That, that's really cute. It said the company plans to launch Bluetooth-enabled devices internationally next year according to a person familiar with the matter. Products that were on the market before August 8, 2016, we all know that date, 
were supposed to start undergoing review this year until Gottlieb extended the deadline until 8-8-2022. He said Thursday that the FDA is actively considering reinstating the original deadline, meaning companies may soon be required to submit applications. It may also pull flavored e-cigarette products from the market until those applications are reviewed and cleared. I don't know if everybody was paying attention, but it kind of hit that spot last week when they sent out the 60 letters. They are reviewed. Now I got a and cleared. Mute everything about that so that I can turn around and see. Not the manufacturer's fault. Yeah, I, Patrick, you're absolutely right. It's not the manufacturer's fault. The manufacturer sells to somebody that retails the product. 73% of C store sales. Yes, true. Jerry, 100% true. Mr. Gorlitz, good to see you this evening, sir. <laughs> Spending time in the naughty corner. Uh, David, I'm going to be right there beside you, and we're all going to be in really good company. There is no doubt about that. But you can see where this is really starting to take some traction. He said Thursday, that's today. Today was on CNBC, evidently sometime. I didn't catch it. I've been actually working. The FDA is actively considering reinstating the original deadline, meaning companies may soon be required to submit applications. That's a wonderful thing that we're going to submit applications. But we know it's not... It's not going to work. It, later in this little article, it said if he had kept the original date, companies would have started sending in applications and would not, would not have received a decision until next year. Really? You want us to send these applications in and you want us to take the time to do what we're supposed to do. And then you're going to sit and you're going to fumble and fart on them and not do anything until next year. Can anybody besides me start to smell a good, healthy whiff of uh, cow dung in all of this? I mean, the way that it's looking, they, they want to wipe the market out. And then they want to say, oh, well, yeah, you, you've got a new piece of technology that doesn't, that doesn't work when it goes near a school. And it doesn't do this when it goes near that. Bluetooth technology. Yeah, but the rest of us that take the time to be responsible adults and purchase some mod and batteries and coil and cotton and e-liquid, what happens to the rest of us? This is one of those things that I'm not going to get overly worked up tonight, simply because there, there is no quick, easy answer. It, it, it is one of those things. It's just it can't happen. It's not a quick, easy fix. I wish that it were. Um, yeah, there is no soon. I, I agree with about that. But the thing being, the uh, VTA, National Board, it came out today. They had a, a webinar that was talking about things that they're going to, to start doing. If you belong to your state advo advocacy group, Grab hold of them. Check it out. If you had the chance to look at the web webinar today, um, stop and take a look. Because some of the things that they're talking about, I, I would be interested to see how many people either agree or disagree with things that are going on. But anyhow, I want to get back to what Gottlieb had said. said critics have scolded Gottlieb for ever giving e-cigarette companies more time. He said it was necessary because it wasn't clear what the FDA wanted from manufacturers. They still don't know what they want us to do. He said now a year later the FDA has issued some guidelines and plans to release more soon. He said we couldn't anticipate and we and what we didn't anticipate in all fairness was how fast the youth use would accelerate. 
I'll call simple bullshit on that. They did not anticipate how many companies were going to be submitting information into their system. As I recall, when this first came out and they told us there were deadlines and people were submitting the way that they asked us and told us that we had to, we overwhelmed their damn system because it's antiquated. It's a piece of garbage sitting in a closet somewhere that somebody, I think, in 1968 wrote the program for it right before they launched to go to the moon. Anyhow, <laughs> we'll, we'll try to keep this civil. Not, not going to guarantee that part. Um, but some of this is just, it is mind-blowing to see what and really what is not happening. I keep looking at the things that are going on and I'm not seeing that the FDA really wants to step in and work with the industry as it is right now. And I think there's a lot of people that would agree and they know that they, they just, they, they sit around and they say, no, we're, we're not going to do that. Mr. Crowley. Good evening. Evening, Jerry. Huh. The FDA is having a massive problem in between what the American public needs, what the government wants, and what the MSA money and income from Big Pharma and Big Tobacco are demanding that happen. Again, you, you turn right around and you want to sniff out any of this. Follow the money. Follow the money and see where it goes. I, I know that it's not going to lead you astray. I'm going to shuffle off of that for a minute. I, w I want to zoom over and I don't have a link. <laughs> You're stalking Fig. All right, Kevin. If Fig gets a stalking license out, we're all going to have a problem. Um... Here's the thing, if you, and I'll ask, uh, Mr. Tarling, if you could be so kind, check out a video that was made by Phil Basardo. It, it has some absolutely <laughs> wonderful message drilled right into it. And the first time that I watched it, it honest to God, um, I even told Phil I was shocked at, at one part that I saw, <laughs> and and I just I couldn't believe it. It it drove the point home so well that it's not even funny. But it was a, a video that that Phil Basardo made about the 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 best vape trick. I don't remember what he entitled it. And I'm hoping that somebody will throw it in into the chat window so people can go and take a look at it. There it is. Thank you, Bill. Um, but if you get a chance, turn around and watch that video. It, it's amazing. A again, there's a piece that just floored me when I took a look at it. I was like, oh, my God, really? R.D. Smith, how you doing, sir? But this video has that, that wonderful characteristic of driving its point home in a subtle yet not subtle yet humorous it's just a damn good video take a look at it when you get a chance and then share the hell out of it I, I mean really it, if you get a chance share it until it can't be shared anymore uh, Phil had told somebody that they could go ahead and use it uh, post it repost it throw it all over the place and I would say go for it do do just that um, it's on YouTube for the people that are listening on Spreaker or uh, go to taste my juice if I'm not mistaken taste my juice dot com or look up Phil Basardo on Facebook and you can't miss it it, it talks about vape tricks and the greatest trick of all of them. Um, get a chance. Go check it out. And see what you think. And then, again, share it. Share it until it bleeds. Share it until it just won't stop. 
this evening our guest, and, and I'm kind of waiting because he's taking care of a few small odds and ends. Our, our guest is somebody that some people know and some people don't know. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, P. Basardo on YouTube. That's where you'll find this video. But our guest this evening is Tony Ottomanelli. Now, Tony is a journalist. And he has written... It's one thing that I'm going to ask him. I don't know how long he's been going at this, but some of the articles that he has written is just amazing. And we're going to get into a couple of those. But like I said, I'm, I'm kind of watching and kind of waiting for him to be able to rejoin me through Zoom. And I'm like, okay, dude, it, it's definitely time. He had a couple of things that he had to stop and take care of, though. So in the meantime, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put our sponsors up because if you would take a look at our sponsors, they're the ones that make sure that uh, Smoke Free Radio continues moving and... If you get a chance, go check them out and give them a little bit of love. Hey now, this is Dimitri with Smoke Free Radio reminding you to please show some love to our wonderful sponsors. Without them, there would be no Smoke Free Radio, and they are as follows. All the way from Florida, Moon Mountain Vapor with locations in Florida and their liquid available for wholesale and retail, moonmountainvapor.com. Some of the best custards and tobaccos on the market from the Brickwells Vaping Company. The lovely shell with a vapor bar. Locations in Texas, Virginia, and West Virginia. And of course online at thevaporbar.com. And who says you can't have award-winning e-liquid without cartoon characters? That's exactly what you're going to get at theplumeroom.com. And finally, of course, the Vaping Advocate magazine that has generously provided the telephone lines for you to communicate with us. Thank you for your support. And finally, for you, the listener, don't forget to check out the coupons and codes page on Smoke Free Radio. Pick up some e-liquid and save some money. From all of us here at Smoke Free Radio, thank you for your continued support. You got to love Dimitri's voice when he's turning around and making things like that. Yeah, if you would stop, check out our sponsors for the Smoke Free Radio Network. It is part of what helps drive and keep everything moving. I know that there has been an awful lot of things that have been happening in the news, so to speak. And I'll tell you something. It Part of it is frightening, might be the right word. And deceased got live back on CNBC and talking about being at a point where they're thinking about bringing the predicate date backwards. I don't know how much more he can threaten and, and try to take care of things. But in, in other pieces of the news, you've got people that are still looking at flavor bands. You've got T21s that are rolling along. It is one thing that I, I remember seeing from the VTA in their webinar today, they had a, a map. And it was color-coded into three levels, red, yellow, and blue. Red being, oh my God, there's a problem. Yellow being, this has been introduced. Blue being either not introduced or defeated. And there were so many states that were in a red category that it wasn't even funny. And that... It's enough that it should be eye-opening for anybody 
that is even thinking about being in the vaping industry. You've got um, people that are continuing to pick up grant money when, honest to God, they should not be. $20 million here, 16 or $11 million over to Washington University. But there's one that did get me, and I'm trying to find it without having to scroll through almost everything that's in this group by uh, Mr. Bill Tarling, runs Vape Distortion Group. If you haven't joined it, take a look at it. Tons of wonderful information in there. The FDA put out their... The cost, the real cost, I don't even know what it, what they entitled this thing. There was a video that went out that they did that makes it look like a science fiction movie of, I don't know what, crawling through people's veins and vaping and God knows what. I found it disturbing, shocking. The FDA can put stuff out like that and yet... Here we are in the industry trying to stay alive. And we're not allowed to speak the truth. We're not allowed to tell people that this is at least 95% safer. Yet the FDA can turn around and come out with this god-awful video to scare teens away from vaping. Uh, I'm only going to get into this lightly. And my chair keeps sinking. Pretty soon I'm going to be looking like this. Loved my father-in-law dearly. Hands down. Wonderful man. Came over, played cards the other evening. And he goes, hey, you know, did you hear the news that they might be shutting vaping down? And this was the beginning of a 30-minute conversation. And honestly, it was more about me talking to him and trying to let him know that the part of what he caught in the news alludes to one thing, but that's not what they really said. But it brought to my attention, this is what the American public is doing. They're hearing part of a story, or part of a narrative, or they're hearing just a little bit of something, and they're walking away with that, going, oh my God e-cigarettes must be horrible or oh my god there's an, a teen epidemic or oh my god did you hear about this and what they're hearing what they're retaining and what they are saying to other people is nowhere near close to being truthful and I'm glad that, that Mel did that simply for the fact that it helped me understand what Joe Public might see or hear or anything when it comes to things that are coming across on CNN or Fox News or any other garbage news station that carries anything but the truth you know the, the people are only picking up and hearing part of it and it is also it here's another thing my father-in-law Mel hears me talk about vaping constantly uh, I'm always talking about it, always saying something about it. So when we started our discussion, about three minutes, literally about three minutes as I was talking to him, trying to reverse engineer what this commercial had done, his eyes glazed over. And I could see it. You, you can always tell when somebody is like, oh, yeah. And, oh, wow. Did you see the squirrel? I, I, I'm going to go check out. And you know that they're gone. It, it helped me understand that when we speak to other people, we are going to have to be concise. We are going to have to use something to get their attention. We cannot continue to repeat the same thing over and over again because it's just, it's not going, they hear it once, twice, okay. They hear it the third, fourth time. They might check out. And it's not because they, they don't have a desire to listen, but their brain has already heard that. They've already assimilated that. I've got to go and check in the chat because I'm seeing a lot of people here. 
Um, you have to, yeah, the link to the enforcement contract page. I don't even want to think about that one. I'm going to check that one out here in a minute. And Bill Tarley did put the link to the FDA ad that I was talking about where people's faces grow, grow, grow grotesque in nature and things like that. And here again, I'm sitting and kind of waiting. Mr. Tony, I know that you are out there somewhere. It's uh, 27 after, Tony. Tony. I'm hoping that he was able to make it on this evening because there's, there's some articles that I want him to be able to talk about that whether, and it was before uh, Vape News had changed their name. They, they were formerly Vape Magazine. But he has written for some of the the largest e-cigarette and vapor technology and just vape anything out there. And he's done, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's been in the bathroom for quite some time there, Patrick. There ain't no doubt about it. But at any rate, that that's one of the things was this FDA garbage video that was put out. And it would be enough that would make even Ridley Scott proud. <laughs> I get this little message that say, if you're in a panic, just start to shout. No, no I'm not going to shout. I'm just going to continue bitching about things. Anyhow, that was one of the things that came out. If you had been watching the news, and here again, I'm, I'm scrolling down through it because there was another one that really caught my attention. Man, I still have to find it here somewhere. Chicago, in their infinite wisdom, Chicago, with everything that they want to try to do, wants to raise taxes. There we go. Mr. Emmanuel, they want to raise taxes again on cigarettes, e-cigarettes, tobacco, you, you name it. They, they want to ramrod it all the way through. This guy has, he's got an axe to grind because I, I don't see how else he could really do some of these things. His quote I hate tobacco. I really hate it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Manuel. How do you feel about booze, beer, tequila, hard liquor, um, safe needle injection sites, the heroin epidemic? I haven't caught a lot of your your article's about those yet, sir. Uh, but they want to raise taxes to like a dollar twenty um, tax on lick on nicotine, and he wants to increase tax a dollar fifty per a bottle of e-liquid, if not more. He turns around; it's no secret. It's no secret vape products, particularly easily hidden flavored e-liquids, have risen in popularity in recent years. We need to counter marketing to prohibit youth access. And I'm committed to expand restrictions on e-cigarettes, supporting youth to make healthy choices and protecting residents from tobacco. Really? Did I miss something? Were, were there armed bottles of e-liquid marching on the streets and, and maybe a cigar pushing a cart coming after your home protecting residents from tobacco the last I knew it was a choice that you would make to purchase any e-liquid or any tobacco product how, how does he even consider protecting residents I just don't get it. He said, I'm not a smoker. My parents are not smokers and my kids are not smokers. And tobacco and vaping is a public health nightmare. Well, it must go hand in hand of 
you know, all those angry bottles of e-liquid and all of the vapor cartridges running down the street coming after you, dude. It, it can't get too much worse than that. I, I really don't know. Part of this is... I've got so many things that are going on. Part of this is freezing. Part of this is I don't know what's happening here. At any rate. Ban needed of use of e-cigarettes by teens. Where Where are all these things coming from teens and all of this other stuff? I... They're, they're talking about things that are the CDC said this or that. I just don't buy it. But they, they are coming after everybody. <laughs> yeah, he's on the run, Patrick. Rebecca, how you doing this evening? It's still kind of waiting around to see if, if Tony's going to be able to make it back in. If not, we're just going to be sitting here and... Uh, Talking a little bit about this and a little bit about that. I, I had hoped that he was going to be able to join us. I, he, he had to take just a last minute kind of almost a last ditch effort. So it's it's possible. I really don't know. <laughs> David. David from... David Gorlitz, uh, the former Winston man, for the people that might be listening or don't know, the former Winston man, a hell of a nice guy. And now all of a sudden, everything goes dark. Just when you think you got it down pat. That's all right. We'll continue right on moving. The black screen of death or not. If everybody has a chance, if you can, um, seriously, go check out Phil's piece that he did, his video that he did. For people that don't know, if you have a chance, check out the the Smokers show that Phil Basardo and Demetri Agrafiotis do. If you know anybody that smokes that has questions that really want to turn around and make some changes in their life for a positive way, they do an awesome show. I'm going to try and get in touch with Tony here just one one more time and see if he can ding in and join us for the evening or if maybe he has absolutely gotten flushed because <laughs> I keep seeing Patrick he had to take a long boop but I'll send him one more link. He was here early, and we, we had things going. He had to run really quick. And if I'm not mistaken, he's... For lack of better words, he has like a, a senior citizen's dog. The dog's pretty old. And he takes very good care of his dog. There is no doubt about it. But that that's what caused him to to take off. I think our entire show may have just absolutely frozen. Somehow that doesn't surprise me in the least. Not in the least. See, this is what happens when, when Tony doesn't come along when he's supposed to. And I turn around and then I don't know what's going on. Yeah, Patrick, I don't blame you. It, it, there is something to be said for doing an audio show only. 
There is no doubt about it. An audio show only, you could sit around, and it doesn't matter whether you got a clean shirt on, a nice background, everything clean. But there's, there's a lot that I applaud you for in doing that. Yeah, Bill, I'm working on figuring out what, what made the freeze. We might actually get to it. We might actually not before this whole thing is over. Now, that, that would be an absolute frozen screen. Tony, uh, dude, if you are in any of this mix, I'm going to hit you up one more time. If not, if not, we're just going to kind of shorten our evening and let everybody be on their way. But I know... I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Tony wants to be on here. He wants to be able to talk about um, some of the things that he has written. And he has a documentary that he has been working on for three years. Three years he's been working on this documentary. And I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he would like to be able to talk about that. But it may not. It may not be possible for this evening. And that's quite all right. All right, folks, I tell you what, we are going to go ahead and, and hit our show. I'm going, to do, I'm going to do our famous sponsors piece one more time. And I'm going to try to get hold of Tony real quick. If not, uh, I'll come back. We'll have just a few more minutes and we'll wrap. Hey now, this is Dimitri with Smoke Free Radio reminding you to please show some love to our wonderful sponsors. Without them, there would be no Smoke Free Radio, and they are as follows. All the way from Florida, Moon Mountain Vapor with locations in Florida and their liquid available for wholesale and retail, moonmountainvapor.com. Some of the best custards and tobaccos on the market from the Brickwells Vaping Company. The lovely shell with a vapor bar. Locations in Texas, Virginia, and West Virginia. And of course online at thevaporbar.com. And who says you can't have award-winning e-liquid without cartoon characters? That's exactly what you're going to get at theplumeroom.com. And finally, of course, the Vaping Advocate magazine that has generously provided the telephone lines for you to communicate with us. Thank you for your support. And finally, for you, the listener, don't forget to check out the coupons and codes page on Smoke Free Radio. Pick up some e-liquid and save some money. From all of us here at Smoke Free Radio, thank you for your continued support. Folks, it looks like we're going to have a, an unfortunately kind of abbreviated evening because I've got, I've got not anything coming back from Tony. So I know that he must have run into uh, a very serious issue because that's a guy that typically very normally is on top of the ball and keeps everything moving. So he's run into a little bit of a snag. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and wrap up just a little bit early this evening um, as soon as I can. I'm going to reschedule Tony to be able to come back on. Uh, even if it turns into something that I have to do more as a pre-recorded show. I very much want Tony to be able to come on and talk about 
uh, some of the articles that he has written because they are extremely timely, extremely intense. And, and to be able to walk down memory lane with him, going back to some of his very first articles, is just absolutely incredible. But then I want to hear about what his documentary is actually going to be doing or what it is about. So for this evening, I tell you what, before I turn around and start getting into any more real issues, <laughs> Mr. Coilet says, let's play whack-a-mole. Got Lee Lance and Dick, and I'm, yeah, Durbin. Durbin is a real, real serious pain in the rear end. Uh, Mr. Albert Harper, we're, we're running a, a little bit of an odd show this evening. Uh, unfortunately, Tony has Tony uh, run into more problem than I think he might have expected. So he is going to, unfortunately, miss out for this evening. And I'm pretty much done for the evening. I, I didn't have a whole lot more that I was going to talk about because it, everything else that is out there right now, all the news that is out there is all stuff that people are going to rant about. It, it is... The industry is turning inward, and it's looking like that snake that slowly devours itself. If you take a look through any of the, the comment boards and things like that, you're seeing things that happened with the Midwest uh, Vapor Expo that is happening in Indiana. Uh, a large person, they, were, they, they told him, you, you can't come in. You know, your, your labels, everything is just... You've got garbage. You're not coming in. And that person evidently turned around and strong-armed a lot of the smaller companies that they represent to pull out. So I'm hoping that that whole issue got straightened out in, in some way, shape, or form. But it even, it even led me to talk with Bill Wickstrom this morning. And Bill and I sat down and we talked about this for a few minutes and said, look, it is amazing what you're seeing in expos beginning to happen on more of the national level. It, it seems like it is exploding. There's only a couple of expos left out there that don't seem to have problems or drama associated with them. And I hope that that's true. I hope that those, those particular guys can continue to move and shake and do what they do because we know that we need them <laughs> how you doing mark mark bird people uh, one of the shows one of the the expos that does it right all right folks we're we're gonna go ahead and wrap up for the evening i will reschedule tony for as soon as i can and we'll have Tony come back because, again, I, I really want to be able to hear the things that he's got. But he must have run into a serious kind of snag. And I know that as soon as I talk to him, you know, we'll figure out what what really happened. But um, until next time, here again, I'll, I'll get Tony back in. We'll talk to him. they got a couple other people that we're getting ready to line up. So the next the next two or three weeks are going to be interesting kind of weeks here on Vaping in the Mic. But for this evening, I appreciate everybody taking time to join me. Um, got a lot of things ironed out on, on the board for the sound and everything like that. But it, it never all goes correctly. I, I should know better. After watching Dimitri and his show... And Phil busting his balls about it. I should know better. Anyhow, I hope everybody has a great evening. Um, I'll drop a line in on the show as soon as I can get Tony to uh, confirm for another evening. And until then, I hope everybody has a great weekend. I'll talk to you all soon. <laughs>